요즘 피부와 성형, 비만에 관심들 많으시죠? 잘 치료할 수 있는 의사도 중요하지만 지금은 치료할 수 있는 의료 장비를 다양하게 갖춘 병원을 찾는 게 중요합니다. 마이더스 성형외과 병원은 미국 TV 방송국 k c a l 9에서 한인 성형외과 중에서 최초로 비만을 치료하는 최고 성형외과 병원으로 1등상을 받았고 줄기세포 치료도 정식 허가를 받은 유일한 한인 성형외과입니다. 미국 주류 병원들과 경쟁해서 자신의 콜라겐을 촉진해서 반영구적으로 주름을 없애는 데 미국 탑 1% 인증 병원입니다. 오늘은 닥터 마이더스 성형외과의 루튼 초이 박사님을 모셨습니다. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, I have a lot of questions about the surgery. Sure. But today I want to ask you about double eyelid surgery. Double eyelid surgery is one of the most common uh, procedures done. The most important thing is uh, paying attention to the basic uh, canons of aesthetic surgery. Mm -hmm. That means uh, balance or facial harmony. Mm -hmm. So like even back in the Greek and Egyptian Roman empires, they looked at uh, basically uh, symmetry anatomically, like from the upper hairline to the brows, a third of your face, mm -hmm. from the brow to the base of your nose, a third of your face, from the base of your nose to your chin is a third of your face, and then going horizontally in the same way. So the width of your nose should be slightly smaller than the width of your eye. Mm -hmm. And if you give this proper balance and uh, with uh, buffer plasties or double Asian eyelid surgery, what you're doing is enhancing pa uh, patient's uh, native beauty. Mm -hmm. So you're either removing a little bit of skin uh, elevating on the muscle of the ligament to, to brighten or widen the eye or change the shape so it's more aesthetically appealing. Um, usually the procedure takes about an hour, hour and a half. Mm -hmm. um, it, um, usually it's pretty much uh, pain-free mm -hmm. and uh, the recovery is usually about uh, five to seven days. Recovery is just five to seven days? Yes. Um, uh, over the average, um, it's about five to seven days. You might still have some like minor residual mm -hmm. bruising or swelling mm -hmm. a little bit past that, but patients are getting a pretty good accurate result around uh, uh, 10 days to two weeks. Oh, wow. I never heard about that, like this clear part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Facial symmetry is a yeah. key factor in getting excellent yeah. results, but creating uh, aesthetic balance. Amazing. <laughs> it's good to know. <laughs> so I I have a lot of questions about this. Sure. How do you do the breast augmentation? That's a great question. Well, you know, breast augmentation is one of the common uh, most common uh, aesthetic procedures done across the world, especially in the United States, uh, in which you're enhancing, again, uh, giving f uh, harmony mm -hmm. and balance to the body uh, in regards to augmenting or enhancing uh, the breast by uh, either four incisions. One is a periareal or nipple incision, which mm -hmm. about 75% of plastic surgeons do in the United States. The one's transaxillary, one's inframammary fold, and then one's transumbilical. So the process uh, usually takes about an hour, hour and a half to do the procedure. Um, back in the 1960s when Dr. David Rowe developed the saline or saltwater implant, mm -hmm. you only had basically two choices, which was the saltwater implant or the silicone liquid implant. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was that in the 1980s, they took it off the market and developed a silicone cohesive gel form stable elastomer. So uh, it looks, nowadays people want something that looks more natural, like a tear drop shaped breast in which it's a slow transition between the upper pole to the bottom pole. So it looks like almost like a, a ski slope essentially. Mm -hmm. And then um, you want to create the superior pole fullness or what's called cleavage, mm -hmm. but you want it to remain nice and natural. I think that one of the biggest mistakes most plastic surgeons make is they make too wide of a gap. So the breasts look too far apart and too mm -hmm. uh, prosthetic looking. Yeah. So in order to create a natural line, you have to bring them to the center. It takes a little bit more work, but I can tell you it's a, a reward that lasts forever. And uh, usually it takes about essentially uh, uh, two to four weeks to recover. And it usually takes about just an hour and a half uh, to do the procedure. This is usually the most women worry about the after the breast augmentation. Uh, what about the texture? about the filling of that material? That's a great question. Um, I would say if you're taking a look at uh, the comparison between uh, saline or saltwater implants versus silicone cohesive stable elastomer called cohesive mm -hmm. gel or also nicknamed the gummy bear, uh, out of those two, I would say uh, most uh, uh, 
traditionally th throughout the nation, um, uh, most people are choosing to have something called cohesive gel because it feels more like natural uh, tissue. Mm. And how about the scar? The scar, you know, the scar is obviously surgeon dependent, mm -hmm. but predominantly if you make the incision around the periareolar nipple mm -hmm. incision and you go at a 90 degree angle mm -hmm. and you don't skive underneath the nipple, you really shouldn't lose sensation mm -hmm. and you'll still be able to breastfeed even after uh, if wow. you have uh, children and mm -hmm. so on. So, um, and uh, the scar, if you suture it up um, and then use silicone cohesive bandages afterwards, it's pretty unsightly. You, you can take a look at my before and after work but you can barely tell at all. I heard about this. Every 10 years after mm -hmm. your surgery, you have to change the material. Is it true? Well, well so now the recommendation is essentially uh, you need to be evaluated every mm -hmm. 10 years. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to change it. So you get evaluated mm -hmm. with an ultrasound or MRI. Obviously, if you're 40 or 50 years above, you'll get a screening mammogram mammogram mm -hmm. uh, and then but if everything looks okay uh, most people tend to just leave it in that's great <laughs> another important thing yes. is what is the rhinoplasty surgery that's a great question um, rhinoplasty is essentially when you go ahead and um, change the aesthetic balance mm -hmm. of the nose uh, sometimes that means um, obviously from aesthetic standpoint or functional standpoint you know you have functional rhinoplasties and you have cosmetic or aesthetic rhinoplasties mm -hmm. so usually with aesthetic rhinoplasties you're either shaving down the dorsal hump or you're uh, creating a dorsal uh, septum and uh, and also uh, you're decreasing or uh, on the on the tip and augmenting the tip or you're also decreasing on the width the most important thing is the aesthetic paying attention to the aesthetic canons of uh, surgery in which you're looking at balance mm -hmm. so the width of the nose should be slightly smaller than the width mm -hmm. of, of your eye and then creating usually a nasal labial angle for women which is 110 degrees that's more considered to be a more of an aesthetic appealing nose for men usually the aesthetic angle is at a 90 degree angle and then so it, it slopes down a little bit more and then also for women they have what's called a super tip break mm -hmm. so again looks like a ski slope or a cantilever line going from the radix of the nose to the top Mm -hmm. and then coming down and it ever so slightly it, it lifts up just uh, a little bit. How long is it going to take a recovery? Usually um, it takes about uh, two hours mm -hmm. to three hours to do a, a primary rhinoplasty mm -hmm. and usually recovery is about uh, recovery is two to four weeks and they'll have a nasal splint on their nose. Oh mm -hmm. okay. I have a personal question. Sure. What is the most beautiful shape of the Asian women's face? Well, you know, um, that's quite subjective. Uh, you know, obviously beauty, they say beauty is an eye of the beholder, and that seems to be pretty much true. So um, again, uh, there's a direct correlation to facial symmetry mm -hmm. and beauty. The more balanced uh, your facial anatomy is, uh, the more uh, attractive, supposedly, your, your face is. You know, there are some outliers in which some people have, like, larger certain features of their mm -hmm. face, but they still look extremely attractive. Mm -hmm. You take a look at um, uh, uh, people like Angelina Jolie, mm -hmm. in which, obviously, the oral region of her face, mm -hmm. you know, uh, her mouth and this area of her face seems to look to be a little bit more uh, larger or obtuse, but she's extremely attractive. Mm -hmm. So uh, facial balance is a mm -hmm. key factor. Um, uh, through evolution, um, we were uh, born to uh, observe facial symmetry mm -hmm. because if we look at these uh, curvy linear lines, it allowed us to uh, choose a mate which we would most likely be able to have offspring with. Mm -hmm. And people who had maybe uh, certain curvy linear lines which did not fit that of someone who is healthy, mm -hmm. we wouldn't want to choose to have offspring with them because they might have some congenital abnormalities. So a key factor in reconstructing uh, someone's face, because I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon, is looking at and paying attention at these, um, uh, these anatomical uh, differences so that you put them in a way in which it doesn't disrupt uh, something that's true to nature or something that's authentic. Mm, that's great. I think it's the most important part is just finding their each face is a balance, right? Right. That's, that's a huge factor in regards to creating a, a aesthetic, uh, basically, harmony. That's great. So the last question uh -huh, is, sure. what is the face lifting? Okay. Well, facelift, um, and then there's thread lifts, there's uh, micro facelifts, there's a full facelifts. 
um, you know, back when you saw a plastic surgeon uh, 20 years ago, they say, hey, I'm going to make you look younger. So you know what they do? They just pull your face back and you look like this, right? <laughs> yeah. So you look sort of strange. Mm -hmm. Well, it, we don't do that anymore where you're just removing uh, extra skin and pulling it back. Your three things basically happen when people age. The stigmatis of facial aging is number one. From the time that you're born up to 40 years old, you lose collagen and elastin. So you have lose skin elasticity, mm -hmm. uh, number one. Number two is that you have muscle mm -hmm. and fat atrophy of your face. So your, your face looks gaunt and hollow. And then uh, last of all, uh, essentially the ligaments that suspend your face elongate. So you have the zygomatical maxillary ligament that suspends the malar eminence, your cheekbones. Mm -hmm. You have a Lockwood's ligament that suspends your eye. These things tend to droop, just like you know when you're young and say if your breasts are up here, because you have ligaments that suspend mm -hmm. your breasts. Later on, they uh, fall down and everything falls. It's a fight between you and gravity, mm -hmm. and gravity tends to win. Yeah. So what we do is we, number one, resuspend the ligaments. We uh, tighten up the muscles and uh, we fill in with adipose derived fat stem cells or PRP or some type of uh, fillers, whether it be permanent or semi permanent. And we give you that volume you need to have that youthful appearing face again. Mm -hmm. So, a facelift is you make, uh, it, usually I do what's called a post tracheal approach. So, it's mm -hmm. in the ear, you make incision, you tighten up the neckline mm -hmm. so you get rid of the platysmal banding and extra skin. You tighten up the muscles, you resuspend the ligaments, mm -hmm. and you fill in with volume again so you have a nice, natural appearing face, but with no unsightly scars. Mm. Then what is the best time for the face lifting? That's a very subjective question too. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, when, when it tends to start to bother you, the way I help people determine whether they should have a procedure done is it's quite simple. If they mentally perseverate about it and they mm -hmm. think about it day in and day out and they're wasting mental energy just mm -hmm. thinking about it and they could be using that mental energy to uh, be more constructive mm -hmm. with their life and they're use in, but instead they're it bothers them so much that they just can't stop thinking about it, then they could go ahead and do something about it. Yeah. But if it doesn't bother you, then I would say do nothing. But mm -hmm. if you feel like, you know, we have the technology, we have the ability mm -hmm. nowadays uh, in order to make things better and things to last a lot longer, then I would say go ahead and, mm -hmm. and you know, choose that option. That's true, yeah. Yes, thank you for a lot of good information and thank you for coming here. It's my pleasure and honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> 감사합니다. 감사합니다. <laughs>